and you just want to get kills and XP early on. Or you have other reason, um, f which is more macro. That means that for if PR understands that Juggernaut is the only damage dealer from Alliance, that their only way in the mid game, like at minute 15, to doing what they did last game, which is pushing down towers and forcing fights, is to have this Juggernaut really farm so he can solo, solo handedly take down Bristleback or, you know, kill a Weaver on one stun. Uh, then they might want to try and just to try to slow down his farm, not letting him get Midas and stuff like this, battle. so they can take the fights after. So that would be, um, I think, an appropriate reason for PR to challenge. Um, but it looks like that Kairos is just running around in in, a, uh, in his own woods, so I'm not sure how they want to lane this. It looks like it's a bottom solo mid, so that's unexpected, to say the least. Um, I have no idea how they want I think they're going to do ground double lanes and probably play the Enchantress Bristleback top, oh, sorry, the Maiden Bristleback versus the, the Enchantress. Uh, it's decent, decent defensive, I'd say. You can first by the creep, you know, slow down the aggression. And Alliance doesn't have much to take down the Bristleback. It's actually smart. I really like the laning from. I like the decision making strategy wise from Power Ranger. They're, they've shown great. The uh, gr yeah, great me. strategy. Um, Great strategy so far. Yeah. It's gonna be troublesome for Alliance once again. I, I, I know, like, Cap might be a little bit sad tonight. Like, he's casting MSIB at this evening, but he's a huge PR fan. And he's been yeah. preaching to me for a very, very long time that, like, these guys, they just bring something exciting to the table. They bring, like, something exciting, coordinated, and just purely entertaining. Yeah. And that's, oh, that's, that's exactly sure. what they've done here. Like, you're actually looking now at the Invisory and they got taken away. Admiral Bulldog won't come down. He actually scared the fact out that the Invisory was taken. Because uh, he had his trees right on top of the position at the same time. I, so he's having no desire I to come anywhere near these so. lanes. No, in fact, he's actually trying to just pull up. He's, he's managed to block, but what have we actually got? The arcane orb just to get rid of this tree so the creep wave comes back down again. He can't finish it in time. Yeah, that's actually a shame. to pull his, uh, the creep aggro up and will hold yep. it with himself. Well, played from Bulldog and he's still blocking the camp. So he's gonna do what he does oh, on the off lane, which is... Really, really great. It's gonna shut down their XP quite a lot, but they can still kill him easily with the with the silence, the slow into the silence. But he he's gonna need level three then on Skyros as he got Arcane first level, which is fine to kill the trains as you mentioned. So we have the yeah the Brewmaster versus Bottom on the mid lane, um, which should favor heavily the Brewmaster. The Brewmaster, in my opinion, I don't think Bottom can win that lane. I think he's gonna get cursed. Um, and you can see that Akio already smoked into the uh, the opponent's jungle and he. He's gonna be looking to crush that Skyras, which is playing really aggressive on Bulldog. You see, three creeps. What can Maiden do versus this? Like, she can't do anything. She's it's just food against this. At least can only be tuned out. And if she yeah, no, fights up the Troll Trapper, then that might be enough. Oh, uh, no, but now we just sick. But th there's there's no one close enough to it. Like Abra Bulldog is just a little bit too far. We Troll Traps and they want Moon. Put down. Set a blast. Put down. He's got Shikuchi. Two seconds. The ult are flying in. Munch on the tree, and then Shikuchi's up. Down. Secondary Sentry yeah. Ward. They can see him. The attack Perfect. damage is enough from the Troll. So RK will get the kill. They just Prophet was also just able to reach him, but without that second sentry wall, they would never have seen him in time. Yep, ends up being even worse for Weaver as she used her um, herself as well. So yeah, very unfortunate. I mean, for PR, but great rotation from RK and great decision making. Bulldog told him that the Sukushi was on cooldown. It's, it was only level one uh, when the kill happened, so uh, it's uh, 10 seconds cool, uh, 12 seconds sorry cooldown. So it's kind of huge. Akia then decided to ignore the Skyras and go for the Weaver. Great decision making. It's a really good kill to have. And now PR is aware that there is an Enchantress uh, staying in their jungle, so they are under pressure. You can see that Skyras might not play as aggressive as he was playing against Bulldog and now Bulldog is getting a lot of space, he's level 4, he's even harassing out the Weaver, so... Great movement from Ake and now he might even stab, uh, backstab uh, FNG on, the, on this mid lane. With a good clap from the S4, they can, they can really burst him down. They'd have to catch him out behind it or wait for the lead to be on cooldown, however. Yep, like, but look, like, the lane is actually nice, as is, it's, yeah, okay, he's not, he doesn't want to go now. Uh, they, they probably also think they're going to keep a little bit more pressure on Moon. Because the Weaver is still going to be their major problem coming into the later portion of the game. That's true. Not to mention, like, Skyrath Mage. He didn't bring him down. Sure, he hasn't got a lot of CS, but he's finding the levels. So, Skyrath caused a lot of problems for them during their last game. It's going to be in the back of their mind. And also up on top lane, like, you've got Cheshire and Cap, you think he's care of the pools at the moment, attack. with the Crystal Maiden up here. This lane hasn't really been contested. Brewmaster is 11 for 2 up here. Loader, he's currently running around with a Juggernaut of 15 for 2, but this is meant to be the safe lane for Alliance. 
I don't necessarily agree with Ake's decision to stay in the in the large jungle because oh actually he got killed. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I still I still I still question it because obviously oh the arrow. Yeah, that's it's gonna hit Bulldog. That's a long time. And then she hit the bombs Radiant's up him. Ake's trying to heal tower. him up, but he's taking all the damage himself. Star falls off cooldown. Two points in it. The extra style oh, Admiral Bulldog walks the side. The bugs would have killed him off anyway. But Ake, he's in a lot of trouble. No one touch would have protect him. We just six already thrown out one uh, concussive shot. Radiant's and Ake's actually really really fast on the foot. I think Weaver could have, or maybe because of the boots, they decided not to chase that, which was fine. Nice arrow from FNG. Now, what I wanted to say is that, sure, they're putting pressure bottom, but then it's exactly what we said in the in the early game. Like, their problem will be how to take down this Bristleback. What what physical damage is going to take him down? And that's the Juggernaut, right? And since Ake is letting this lane two versus two, he's basically giving more farm to Bristleback and less farm to Loda. So, uh, I mean, he's doing a great work bottom, but I... I, I'm just a bit afraid of their physical damage uh, in the mid-game. So let's see if it's the right decision. It's obviously... It was obviously a tough call, but I'd like to see how they play against this. Because they must be afraid of that hero. He basically was the reason they got they got stomped the first game. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's see this. Because Mu is not doing that bad. He still has 30 CS to his name, Minute 5, which is a great farm, actually. And it looks like he's going for Midas, so he won't really... Uh, yeah, he won't really care uh, about Arke's those heading north uh, now. There's also this Centaur which will be controlled by Arke, waiting to team up here with EGM. Yeah. But he got spotted out by the Crystal Maiden. And obviously Frostbite is going to make this very, very difficult to gank anyway. Yeah, and the thing is that I I'm afraid it's a bit late. Uh, maybe with the level 6 on Loda it's fine, but Bristleback is already quite tanky now. He has 800 HP and level 2 uh, Bristleback, so... Um, it's kind of hard to burst him down, to be honest. One thing that we haven't really discussed, though, like, yeah. is, is the mid lane. Like, we haven't talked at all about S4. Like, he is dominating this mid lane. Yeah, he's seen destroying a long time. Like, FNG spent most of his time walking around. They went yeah. out of bottom lane. I just saw him coming back out of the secret shop. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Getting destroyed on the mid lane. This is a this is a stomp. Uh, he has more denies than FNG has lasted. So, but honestly, I don't <laughs> see bottom doing anything versus this brewmaster anyway. She has no damage to harass him. Maybe you have to play very 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 aggressive first levels and try to dominate him. But with the passive and everything, he just he just destroys bottom. Now bottom can just bottle crow, but she didn't even opt for a bottle. So. Uh, she could bottle crow and start fall to get her, her farm as well, but yeah. As far as running bottom, this is gonna be a tough one for... Actually, we were not going for Midas at the end of the day, going for portraits and probably uh, what would be a Lincoln's or a Vanguard, I don't know. Probably a Lincoln's. As for heading mid again, yeah, he might want to kill that maiden that's just so... Easy, well, then again, if they can bait out S4 to come closer towards FNG then. And so they're there. trying to crystal back. Yeah, he's gonna die. It's, it's TP's on the way in though, and Loader, he's taken still a lot of damage here, and now Starfall from FNG. Yeah. EGM is one hit away, and eventually got Chen Chick had a line for the tree line. Admiral Bulldog TP's in, and uh, okay, well, the kill will happen, but in comes We Just Stick as well. Seal up Admiral Bulldog, he's almost got enough damage into FNG. Yeah, she reached him. Admiral Bulldog will pick up a double kill here, but it does come at a price. It also brought Juggernaut and Bulldog to pick up the Bristle back and Mirana. Yeah, but also play from Bulldog. Radiant's if he didn't TP into that one, that would attack. be a one probably or two for null in favor of PR and probably a disaster for Alliance. So that's what we, we talked about. This Bristleback is already quite tanky and it's really hard for them to bring him down. They didn't use those as ultimate, so I guess it's the reason why he survived that round. I'm not sure if Bulldog was 6, I guess he wasn't. Uh, oh, Bristleback should be careful. Man. Oh, Loda, Loda almost went for the ultimate on that one. He didn't know if he had enough damage. Okay, they're gonna get the mid tower, that's a really good play from Lance. Great, it's a great rotation by Loda. Allowing S4 to take down the tower, and now he's close to Dagger. This game is looking very different, Lance is looking great in that game. I think they actually might be thinking about coming into middle lane. Like, S4 was low, but with a salve as well as the yep. healing ward from Loda, they're gonna loop themselves around the back of FNG. He still got Moonlight Shadow as well as Leap. So the potential to actually win on this Dyer's gank is low, but when they find someone like a Crystal Maiden, that's a lot easier. A Nova, a Frostbite, and she's already dead. The Moonlight Shadow was used, but we just sick. Who's he focusing on? The arrow where she connects on Loader. Three seconds stun, in comes Cheshire, can't Starfall, already takes away his life points. He's gonna force this bit. He should. He should force, okay, nice one. They need something yeah, more. They, they, really they got him. Oh, no. No split, he dies on the hill. Skyrath Mage kept up with the chase.
Yeah, the, pff, I don't know. The call was kind of hard for S4. And, you know, Brewmaster, they don't want to waste their ultimates because they... Although the cooldown got reduced with the... the not the latest pass, but the one before. Or maybe the one before, I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of hard to just blow, blow your ultimate because you understand that you might not be able to take the next fight. So the decision-making was quite hard. I guess he should have ulted. He thought he could survive that one. I like the, the, the movement from FNG. He got crushed, but he, he's still trying to... You know, he's been in the five kills for GI. Look at that. Okay. So oh, Hoofstorm right, has had a blast, he just wants to run himself away from the Weaver. Weaver's going to commit the bugs to this no. one as well, and they kind of needed the negative armor to do so. Uh, but they won't have enough damage, actually. RK runs away, there's another cut of shot coming in. Close one. But they got the bug off the back of him. And now, oh. whoa, whoa, Sky, wait, wait, what? <laughs> It was a nice try. I think he would have got Ake if, if the, the ulti hit, but Ake got a pretty good, cool, Jeshia really quick reaction. Lowe's about to throw the ulti out there. However, they're celebrating a creep wave here, and Jeshia Castor and Jukit around the tree yeah. lines with five good quilts in the back of Juggernaut he had to back up. Honestly, the individual plays in that game are, are, are very interesting. All the players are playing very, very aggressively. Um, yeah, this bristle back would be troublesome for Alliance. I'm pretty sure they are really struggling to take him down. But now they're gonna try again with Bulldog porting in. Yeah, that might be a kill. Yeah, that, that's a kill for Full sure. sprays or not, like. Oh, but Cheshire he Cat, stick, though. he runs yeah. up. You're right, he's, he's up to six, but he can't get himself a kill from this one. <laughs> and yeah. Rubik was actually stealing quills and returning it into him. <laughs> Funny. Funny stuff. This gem has really good levels. He's level seven. He got Arcane. Uh, he's having a great game. And it wasn't necessarily an easy game as he was facing a two versus two. He wasn't free to pull. So, yeah. Good play from EGM so far. S4 almost has his blink. You can see that Aki is trying to help him to, to get it to get there. So, yeah. Also want to mention the, why Aki is not going for the untouchable because there's just too much burst damage on PR's uh, PR's uh, side. Sorry, so there's no like the heal is way better as you see. It saved him already twice or three times, I think. So we're gonna have our first five v five engagement. Yep. S4, though, has got to pick up that Blink Dagger before this thing actually starts. He's been trapped out in his secret shop. Or he signs up, have a ball off, cross bitten up, and they're coming over. There's already the silence over on Loda. They couldn't actually finish him off in time. The bomb level was down through, but Loda, yep, he will go down. Meanwhile, back into the Brumar split. We've got S4 searching for one, but the Moonlight Shadow is giving a lot of protection. And EGM, right, being focused down by the Weaver. The Brewmaster sends him up, but she ends up helping the Weaver, buying him time while Cheshire Cat. Sick Tide has already been used. S4 back into his normal self. The clap will go, but Cheshire Cat, it's a triple kill from him. Admiral Bulldog's coming in for the last connecting hit, but J4 is going to make this impossible. And Moon also, the damage from behind, it forced the TP out from Brewmaster. And now Moon is going to dive under, under Bulldog. He's got one they, second they until he can so TP. Right, that's all I mean, but the bug connected. Admiral Bulldog, he can't TP out in time, or can he? He's back and he's safe. Dyer's top Great play from Wait, Bulldog. Wait, does defend this still? The EGM they need comes to be back careful with that, though. Yeah, they need to be careful because now they have no split, and when Bristleback comes back, uh, they're going to be looking to try to really dive. The thing is that Bristleback also ha uh, he has mech actually, so oh, now no, this is troublesome for Lions. If, if they also get this guy with Mage ulti off on EGM, okay, Moon doesn't even care about that. There's just double orbs and concussive shot. At the same time, uh, Skyrath Mage goes down, S4 came in through the rear, used that blink dagger and got rid of the Skyrath. Yeah, it's, he got solo XP on that, which is important for him. He was a bit, uh, Prophet. bit behind in experience. I don't see you really winning this fight, however, Prophet. Like, even with a jump in, I guess S4 is diving under the tower. But they'll force the Weaver back at least. That yeah, was a good try. Now, um, PR will just gather and fight. Um, the problem is that Loda couldn't use his ultimate Dyer's last fight. <laughs> it's just a really tough game for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good clap! On the crystal base as well as crystal back. The problem is flying through, but Loda, yeah, he keeps taking up the tower. He never shot yeah. the aggro. So crystal Maiden goes down for the price of a juggernaut, and FNG still got arrow available. So he throws this one out now. S4 is waiting for the time to come in. Oh, Whoa! Hey. That was up target there, FNG. Uh, he needed that arrow is done to stop the TP back of RK. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the Navi Counter Strike player. Yeah, yeah that's the guy that hits headshots all the time. Mark <laughs> is under I like this FNG guy. He's, he's a really funny guy. He, he actually plays for now for a different team. They are. They, he was part of us on the Dragons for a while, attack. then changed oh, yeah, to true. something else. Now, end up leaving Navi. Yeah, that's that's true. It's been a while, not, actually. Yeah. Not that I keep tabs on the Counter Strike scene. All right. I'm a bit. I'm not really up to date when it comes to Counter Strike, but. <laughs> Great, um, great um, backup TPs from PR. Loda Dyer's died once again. Tower. He's getting really attack. shut down, and again, Radiant's I don't want to say we call it, but it's the 
the Bristleback, he's Why having a great game. He's level 11. He's, I don't want, I want to check the network, but he's, he's the first member in the game. And Lula is completely out, so Alliance has no physical damage to their name right now. It's gonna be troublesome, I think. They're bringing a lot of people in, though. Now, even if they don't have physical damage, they're still trying to win on, the, on these small little battles until Lota can reach that physical DPS. And they're coming to middle lane, looking for both FNG as well as J4. Now, they've crossed the river here, so they're a long way away. They Dyer's throw down sentries, so there's no way any Invis hero can survive. So, so, can survive. But, so when bad. you get well, they can do that, and uh, the lead's getting thrown. Some of these pick up, they get the kill on the Mirana. Yeah, Crystal Man and Lisa can lucky stars, but now throws out an Observer Ward, sees it, just Prophet coming in and instantly bails. That's a really good one to have against Prophet because he's always farming in that spot. Um, I don't think it's such a big deal. Sure, they lose the bottom, but honestly, that bottom is, I don't want to say out of the game, but she has. <laughs> The hell job is to put the star for the Moonlight Shadow in the air right now. She doesn't have, she, he doesn't have much on, on the hero. Uh, the way, man. Under yeah, that's really risky from BR. That's very cocky from them to position themselves like this. It looks like they're... We just what? just gonna stick around. Uh, and then if he's trying to save Moon, but Moon's gonna fuck inside this one now. Skyrath goes down very, very quickly. And Weaver just runs out north. Now, Arrow Bulldog, he's got a, he actually managed to get rid of the bug on himself. It's actually uh, lucky for Weaver that that's Kyra's show. I, I don't know if they could have killed the Weaver though. Uh, they have left on EGM, I guess the Weaver would have died. Mm -hmm. PR should defend the bottom tower in my opinion. If they now they don't have lift, they probably shouldn't. Uh, they're gonna be late for this. That's the really tough one. It's the hardest tower to defend. Courier as well. Careful, the Courier. Oh, he gets yeah. it back up on the tree line. Sprout's gonna reveal it, so the Courier will die. And Bristol back though, he's gonna make a pay for this. Skyrath comes in. Apple Bulldog goes down. Where are we gonna stall by EGM? He actually managed to sail to steal the Skyrath Mage ultimate. Oh, Squishy right. now is gonna return. But Jesse and Cat, he keeps with a cool spray, and he's already got two kills. He's got five sprays into the middle of Arcane. He's gonna get the Mech also. Finally, it goes there. Triple kill for him. The Brulings are dying off very, very quickly. J4's ultimate. The Earth Brulings double go and Earth into the clamp. And there he actually waited out to get in front of him to go for the clap. And Moon is right in the back of Brewmaster. Dagger in three. And and Moon is not chasing this. Yeah, they don't want to chase that. Yep, I don't know. Uh, Loda, I don't know, he didn't die this time, but he's really poor. And this Bristleback is causing trouble to Alliance. That's for sure. He got a triple kill. He's just going to get bigger and bigger. And the thing about um, the thing about PR is that if they can, you know, capitalize on those fights, then Alliance is in trouble. But if they get nothing out of this, sure, they lost. Um, they lo I think Alliance lost Radiant's the fight at the end of the day, but PR is not getting attack. anything in return. Sure, that Weaver's farming, but I don't think it's enough. So. It doesn't look that bad for Alliance, to be honest. Uh, they can have some damage thanks to S4's Aghanims. He's having a great game so far. If he gets Aghanim a decent timing, and it looks like he will, because it's only 16 minutes into the game and he already has 2k5, uh, then they do have damage to burst down the Bristleback. What I want to say is that that steal from EGM actually won them the fight, or made it even, because he, he alone took down uh, half of the HP of Bristleback, and even with that, they almost didn't kill him. So, if he, if it wasn't for that uh, mystic player still, then the fight would be a disaster for Lions. Yep. Yeah, she's looking at Cheshire Cat right now, man. Underneath the tower, taking damage. Dyer's 12 HP yeah. a second fortified. still regenerating for him. Radiance middle tower is under and attack. And the mana keeps kicking in as well because he's got the crystal mate Nora. So they're just bumping him up. So, so, so the cool spray is easy. Okay. Okay, yeah, Pettis damage, but Brusselback just turns his back so he's okay. And then Coils again will be installed, but the arrow is coming up. Alliance yep. able to evade it. The tier one tower will remain alive for now. But they're really not giving this one up. Now Loader comes in. The bug's out from Moon. And he just tries to do some physical DPS to Loader force him back. As the Moonlight Shadow will trigger off here from uh, from Power Rangers. They, again, they scout with the arrow. Yeah, if he hit one arrow, they might be able to win the fight. But right now, he's not being very successful with those arrows. It's a bit, of sh it's a bit of a shame for a PR. They're actually losing like, yeah, out too, because you look towards yeah. top lane. Like Admiral Bulldog's farming into Necro book high level too, and that's yep. going to cause problems for Bristleback. I talk about like Crystal Mate giving the aura, but they're still going to be Necro book throwing him off. And now they jump on Jesse and Cat, spin in front, Brewmaster split. They want this guy dead. Want and make already been used, and Skyrath can't get there in time to help out. In fact, already they think they can chase it down. Just taking up a creep wave for now. Mirana's already very low on top lane. He's dead. And they found Skyrat. Yep. Send him up, bring him down. He's got to throw the ult here before he dies. And that's and what's they get a 
It's um yeah, I don't know, it's a bit of a mistake, miscommunication from PR, it happens. Uh, Birstleback just stayed in the range of the tower when bottom TP'd out and the other just went back and they had that ward in the in PR's jungle. That ward is hurting PR so hard, the one in their jungle, because Alliance saw that the three heroes were running back, then they instant went on the Bristleback which was half HP. It was really cocky Radiance from him to stay there. He needs to attack. be a bit more careful, I think. The thing now is that Moon, he now has a great farm. He's been farming and, you know, getting some kills and assists the whole game long. Now he almost has Lincolns. He's, what, like 600 away, something around this, yeah, 500 away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the Weaver is gonna start being a problem for Alliance. And as you mentioned earlier, they have zero lockdown for that Weaver. They can always, you know, cycle him because they have a lot of single target to disable the Lincoln, but yeah, I guess they can just try to carry the Weaver. I would go VKB on Weaver that game, rather than this one. Okay. Lodo just walks up to a point blank range here, and now he realizes even physical DPS is taking away one side of his life points. Probably will go to Centaur, start on the stomp, but RK cancels it, realizing the hero's already gone, and Cheshire Cat now will come in. They really want to finish off these out of tier 1 towers, and they got it too. The Centaur was looking for the denial. And it looks like it's going to get farmed up as well, so easy money. Attempted denial by RK, but not going to happen. But probably the main, split push yeah. going. Okay, what, one thing very interesting is that S4 is not going iron. The, that's, that's very surprising. They have the final split in 5 seconds, so they're going to be looking to go really soon. You can see S4 is in position already, Bulldog's ready to TP in... Uh, they actually need 10 seconds on Bulldog's TP, but the tower is not going to wait for that. Nope, the tower's not going to wait just goes for the split. And already sends the Brooks back up in the air, but Luda! Skyrim's mage old, but just evaporates him. They do still lose FNG, and uh, Shikuchi beats on him at EGM. They got Moon caught in the tree line. He's going to time lapse that. He didn't get the time. He never was able to time lapse. Admiral Bullock didn't steal the Sweetest and continue to just spam abilities from this high ground. J4 is also in trouble. Frostbite, Nova. Try and bring that EGM, but Shikuchi will save him. That great mech touch by Cheshire Cat gives a little bit more time to fight on here. And you're right, S4, he sealed up, losing half his life points. The cool spray just keeps on going. Plus, the nasal boot up four different times. However, we did, uh, Cheshire Cat's losing his teammates. Like, EGM's fighting from the high ground. S4 comes back in for another blink stomp. But he's still got four curls in the back of him. And they're thinking about Cheshire Cat. And Cheshire is always slowing it down here. He, the whole the time he can see out. I don't know what he's doing. Drunken Haze. They just keep going. This might be bad, this might be bad because Arrow they're... flies in, it hits on S4. Four stacks, Lowe's going for the spin. He's doing all over the fireball. FNG looking for the star form. Arrow actually stolen now by the Rubik as well. RK able to TP himself out in time. Leap up, giving well, that movement speed now, but there's the arrow coming into Brooks' back. Hit him in the face as well. Sheba's guard from S4 giving a little bit more space too, but then Cheshire Cat, Meg already off cooldown. He gets through the healing ward. Provolta continues to bounce through as well. It's so much survivability, and this Rubik fight has. just won't stop. Yeah, Rubik is toast. The arrow comes down, making S4 have to just juke it around. Slowing his movement down too. He also got connected on the bug. But he's going to find an illusion rune and then blinks away up into safety. Yeah, it's been a really long fight. A great one. EGM played really, really Dyer's well. Uh, the Bristol that could TP denied. out the whole time as Rubik used his lift very early in the fight. Uh, he, I don't know why he stayed. It was a bit, yeah, I don't know, a bit questionable attack. decision making. But great fight. At the end, I, I'm not sure who it favors. Uh, one thing I want to mention though is that Alliance's way to play versus PR's strategy is different. They adapted. You can see that Bulldog is joining the fights only only when the split is ready and when they were they are willing to take the fight. And now he has Necro 3. He wasn't doing that with the... Uh, obviously he had Laundry, but it would have been S4 to do that last game. And he didn't, so he never got to his Blink Dagger on Batrider. So, better decision making from Alliance. I feel it's like they woke up from because of the first game, and now they're getting a fast first round. Or can they get it? If, if PR can contest that, it's huge. They have Bucks a private fit for Alliance. Moon to Mill, look at he gets through the healing wall to start with. And then they jump out. Rumor's gonna split off and Crystal Mane's dead. She try and turn around the pick up and throw down. Wait, what? Okay. Okay, now they do finally bring it down. This and Crystal Mane sends up in towards the air. PR, they're getting hit by absolutely everything. S4's Brewmaster Ultimate has just caused so much havoc. Now they can move over to Cheshire Cat just to pop up they can, so they can see him as well. And he just turns into RK. So maybe now it's time for, for, uh, for PR to turn. The arrow will not be able to connect, but Moon rejoins the engagement and he's focusing over on this enchantress. It's going to take a while to bring him down, however, but they're going to keep these cool sprays coming out. And Arcade does take a fall. They move over to Loader as well. 
really slowing up. He's got ulti in five seconds time. He may need to use it just to survive through this, but it's physical DPS. And Thor comes back in again. Luckily for Loda, he had the AGOC model, so he can come back out and get a full ult, but a solo on the chest here, Cat here. If he wants to throw it out, he sees Moon as well, so he's got two different targets to choose from, and there goes the ultimate. Cheshire Cat tanks it, however, pops up the Meg Charge, but he comes out from Molotov. With also these Necro units, Skyrath, however, will bring down EGM. That ult will kill him down no matter how far he runs away from this one. While Moon, so low in life, Shikuchi up the hill. They can see him because the Necro units, but they can't keep up with him. Into the tree line, looking to TP out. The Nerve Crush slow him up, but the spin from, uh, from uh, Aloda almost got him, but it was S4 to get the last hit in. Now they move over to We Just Sick. 24 to 18 on the board. The Lions, this is just a brawler game, man. Yeah, as far as carrying Alliance really hard that game, he's playing out of his mind. Like, awesome plays, awesome micro. The Bristleback is not doing anything in the fight. He's just being cyclone the whole fight. Um, and the Weaver doesn't have enough items to, to, to be really... Um, to cause trouble to Alliance yet. It might happen, but the thing is that Alliance is catching up very, very strongly. Like, Aki almost has Aganin, so that now has Yasha. Mental style, if he wants to go for it, I think... I don't want to... I don't want to... You know, be wrong, but it, I think it removes the quill spray stacks, and it should obviously remove si uh, Skyrim's silence. So mental side is definitely a good item to get for Loda that game. I hope he goes for it, unless he wants to just get a BKB now, which is also fine. Um, anyway, the, uh, this game, what's very different is that the Skyras isn't able to silence the, the Room Master because S4 is, is very fast at popping his ultimate or he just waits the right time, but mm -hmm. he always gets his ultimate right in those fights. And Loda wasn't able to do that last game. Of course, he had a way, like the game was way harder for him as he had no dagger, and that's the, the, the game changing factor. Yep, I don't know how PR wants to adapt to that because they're, the, the, the straight pushing into Alliance won't work anymore, that's for sure. Uh, they lost many fights and now they can't really go in like this against that Brewmaster plus Prophet that now has Dagger plus Necro Tree, so he's gonna be looking to split push really hard against uh, PR and they have nothing to catch. The very the, the big difference between this game and the, the other one is that in that one, Alliance played uh, better at split pushing and take it, only taking fights, you know, getting the the best of the of the time usage mm -hmm. they had, and also PR has nothing to initiate, no long range initiation such, such as a Fisher or something like this. So the game is very different. PR are wasting a lot of time in front of a Lightsaber Tower, and it hurts them a lot. That Bristleback wants to go for a pipe, I'm not sure I agree with that. Kill on top lane. They're using uh, Moonlight Chance to finish on EGM, and they are going to nuke him down as quickly as they possibly could. Yeah, it's not yeah that big of a deal though for Lance, it's just to support that dice. I mean, he has his first time already, he bought the wards. He probably lost like, what, 50 gold or something? Yeah. Doesn't really matter. I mean, sorry, it's, it's always good to get kills, but uh, they, they need more than this if they want to come back at that point. They may, they may try and force it. Admiral Bulldog's now up on the top lane. He'll evade oh, he the, arrow the arrow to start with. And now FNT oh. comes up to try and fight. And Admiral Bulldog is some of his units. And he's looking to turn to try and fight this one, but this is not going to end well. Because the bugs in the Skyrath made sure to hit perfectly. Season. And that's a little bit more of a bigger deal. That was really weird. Like, he saw the arrow and he had the dagger ready. I think it was baiting. It was probably the call from the from whoever makes the call in their team. But yeah. End up staying one second extra. No, that bottom is like. He has no mana, actually. Uh, he doesn't, S4 doesn't know that. Sky, Skyrath is also really, really low on mana, but now the Necro units are coming out. They seal him up to start with, they need more help than this, however. Oh, and they works. need the arrow to connect, yep. With RK coming in close, they just TP out. They realize the yeah. problem, there's no stunts here to stop them, so they just get out. Good TPs. Good TPs, yeah, that's the problem with Alliance's lineup. They have only two disabled in the whole lineup. Like, obviously when Brew isn't in the split form, but they have only the ultimate from Loda and the lift from EGM. They have nothing else right now, so... Uh, they, they can always TP out, yeah. He's going for Deso over BKB, which is actually fine. I know I called the BKB, but since it's always Brewmaster that's uh, being lifted up in the air, so Weaver needs damage. He, he doesn't care about the Brew disables. He's being ignored in the fight, so BKB is obviously the right choice. MKB was also decent, I guess, to burst down the Brewmaster during the, the, the disables. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess, I guess this was cheaper, so faster way to get some damage, and they definitely need damage now. They're going on okay. Aki once again. Yeah. They, they see them, they have center plus four, which means they see them on the minimap. So, yeah, uh, now they're good eyes. That doesn't work anymore.
Mm. You, you don't see any more on the mini map? No, nope, there's there's no mini map. There's no uh, there's no normal vision for sentries now. Uh, All right. For for smoker to see for normal vision though, that's what broke it just then. So the okay. level was around the corner. He just came in just close enough to RK, hugging the tree line that he got scattered out. All right. Has been oh, the radiant wow. career. Died, I don't know where. Don't, okay, well done. They had a ward and he brought this to it Weaver. It was a very good thing that, that Desolator did reach its target before the yeah. end. Good timing. BKB on S4, yeah. So they're gonna have to deal with the level 3 premise split, that's for sure. No matter how they play the fight, now it's over. And I don't like the, the pipe plus mech on the, main, on the same hero because he's getting cycloned and he, I don't know. The thing is that then it's how, like, about 7k gold wasted uh, when he's cycloned, that they can't use those items, so it's Dyer's a bit of a shame. Alliance is gonna lo be looking to fight this for sure. They have Necro 3 ready on Bulldog, that's gonna TP in and backstab the sports. It's gonna be a really hard fight. Sheep is already on a chest here, Cat's struck and pacing him up as well. And now they're gonna seal a first ball, the uh, swivel pump, but just after the uh, the ultimate from Skyrim has dropped down. FNG's in a lot of trouble. Underneath the tower being locked and controlled, while the Bristleback again set up and towards the air. He triggered the pipe off, so there's not as much magical damage being dealt out to him. But at the same time, top tower is under attack. I just keep on the chase. Telekinesis off cooldown in five Radiant's seconds time, and they just send him fallen. up. They hold the bristle back here, and the question from PR is: they bring more heroes up because they got they, they got actually and they just drop it. Okay, now he does come in and join the fight. Admiral Bulldog just brings in his necro units as well. Cheshire Cat's gonna drop. 70 seconds on the sideline. Admiral Bulldog is already pushing in the bottom line. That's why I wasn't quite sure if Alliance would come back or if PR would want to commit any more Radiant's heroes this fight. Are they, are they waiting in the tree lines to gank this? This is this is uh, funny. I like the decision making from S4 to bait the silence, so, so he made sure Lola is safe. As Lola didn't go for any item but Aghanim, so he can still be Radiant's killed under the silence. And also attack. great decision making from Bulldog to decide. Oh, okay, Radiant's bye bye. Top 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 the bugs are out, Apple Bulldog silenced up first, but he's gonna have a lot of this in the end. As you said, Bristleback buys back. But all they're getting is like Nature's Prophet, RKTP's out to safety. The arrow flies out, but it did get some vision of S4, but he blinks himself down and will also TP out to safety. Yeah, so that w that wasn't worth it, I don't think. So they lost a tower plus a Bristleback buyback. I mean, it's still okay to kill Bulldog, but it doesn't change anything to the game. So great, great try though. They, that's the best try they could have got that one. Like now, and if, if Rush was back anytime soon, then they could have Rush, uh, thanks to that kill. But unfortunately for them, it's not the case. Uh, yeah, I, I really like the decision from S4 to bait the silence and also the, the Skyros ultimate. Uh, great play from him, and also Bulldog to, to keep on speed pushing. He's really good at assessing if his team is gonna win or lose the fight. So if he needs to join it or not. And if he doesn't join the fight and the team still wins it, then it's a double win as he was able to take down another tower. So really good decision making from Bulldog that game. It's all gonna be a go out the next rush. You can see that the Alliance doesn't want to let it. They're already scouting. So PR will have to fight this, I guess. Bottom is... I don't know if it's catching up, but now she has men, so maybe it will help her farm a bit more. It's, it's taking a while anyway for FNG. Yep. And, the, and the fact that he's dying within every single fight is also not helping the case. Yeah, he's having a really bad game. And now that Enchantress has uh, Aghanims, now, now Alliance has the damage. Now there's no problem for them to fight the Bristleback because Bulldog is dealing a lot of damage, so is Aki and so is Loda. So. <laughs> look, look at how Loda build as well. Didn't finish the mana, built a Maelstrom, and just got his Aghanim set up. Yeah. S4 really, really carried that game for Alliance, that's for sure. He played awesome. Yeah. Well, it's not over just yet. Our Alliance are looking in a very commanding position. Yep. Their gold advantage is actually stretched to 13k. The experience was actually looking a little bit better for him before, but it's kind of to, to turn back up again. It's 5,000 uh, advantage of Alliance, but they had like 8.5k at one point. What they really need now is that Weaver baiting spells for Alliance. They need Weaver to play very aggressive. It's the only way. Like, they need to... They need the Alliance to do some mistakes. Because if they play the fight correctly, and I'm expecting them to do so, it's gonna be really hard for PR to win any fights. And Admiral Bulldog and Loda. The sick of this of PR being up on the top lane. PR's major weakness is the, is the ability to deal with split push. Exactly. They're always looking to fight, so... If Admiral Bulldog keeps that pressure on the bottom lane, which he easily can, Especially once now he, he purchased the old now. The courier is coming out to pick up the hyperstone right now. Once he has that, like this push is gonna really hurt PR all the time. 
Alliance should initiate top, even two versus five. If they can cancel TPs or you know um, make Pierre uh, not able to TP back and defend, yeah, Radiant's then they're gonna get cracked with uh, load up plus Bulldog. So it looks like Pierre is Dyer's going back, and Alliance has no has words to score that, so they're very afraid. They denied the top tower, rushes back. They're gonna be looking to rush. Probably they will go in right now. Yeah, they're going. So they're getting a lot probably on Loda because he's the squishiest target on their side. The main target for PR and then I'm pretty sure they can even push base. And look at the damage they can just pump out to this guy. Yeah, that's insane. And that, that's, that's just three heroes. That's not even all of them. And looks like uh, maybe Moon, the bugs will come out, but it's already too late. By the time the, the bugs hit, Roshan is already dead. Time. The arrows get soaked up too. So there's no opening for anything for PR to jump into this. The Aegis team model is in fact on the Juggernaut. And, and you can see the call for it. You can see the decision from Alliance to pop Necro threes and and basically every spell they had, they had Enchantress also attacking within pets as well. They didn't want to take the fight in the rush because they understand that if they're able to take the rush, which they, which they did by the way, then the game is pretty much I want to say over, but Pierre is in a really really tough position. Um, so again, they're playing it safe, which is fine. And now they're gonna be looking to push into the mid, into the mid tier two, and probably Rax, I think, because PR the the problem of their draft, as you said, they can't they can't catch anyone, but they can't also really out push. They have very bad wave clearing. They have sure uh, the Nova from the Maiden, but it's not gonna clear the trains. So um, PR is able to really harass, like. Or try to start taking down buildings. And this tree and the racks. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming out about Lotus positioning. <laughs> he was up on the cliff with an invis throat, and there was a split moment Radiant's when uh, Skyrath was almost in range for a, like a Juggernaut ultimate, which means Skyrath will be dead before they started. Now, the split push is happening right now from PR. FNG is pushing at the bottom lane. He's actually almost got enough money for his BKB, and Apple Bulldog's gonna fight a man's man. And that's FNG. Leap away. He almost hit the TP instantly, but he knows how much damage Admiral Bulldog can pump out. Ooh. So a solo kill against him. Because he bought both the Oak and the Mythical Hammer too, there is no buyback money for this Piranha. And yeah. Dodog just bids out most of the attack and so far uh, on the Skyrim base. Well, there's four jumps in deep, a BKB, and then goes into the split. No other control. Juggernaut all these bouncing around too. I think it's hoping for more hits there over on J4, who is being Radiant's forced a lot tower. further inside the base. And he will go down while uh, Moon also being locked in control. Centaur stop. It's a little too late Radiant there from Arke, but it doesn't strong. really matter. Cheshire Cat's the only one trying to defend up against the Lions. Back on the wax. Loader has to spin outside the Skyrim base. Hold him, but he comes back in for the tower. While Cheshire Cat brought down by S4. The mid ranked is, on, is totally dead. And if they can bring down Moon as well, you may even get a GG call out here from Power Rangers. Moon's chasing for it. He gets the kill on Arke, but he loses his life for it. And Alliance is going to rotate bottom. Put the final nail in the coffin and let the series up 1 1. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it was called, I don't know, it w was really the first fights where they lost it to escort the master and did some unfortunate mistakes. Yeah, GG. GG. there's really nothing they can do, and Alliance played that perfectly, and now they're way far ahead for us. So. The thing is that PR doesn't have a, a, any mechanism to come back in that game, like, there's no, I don't see any opening to try to bait some fight, or they're really doomed in that game. Yeah. For them though, if they got the momentum in this lineup, it would have been something very, very different as far as the game goes. Yeah. Uh, they didn't get the control over the Brewmaster, as you said before, during the game. Uh, so, Brewmaster.